Word on the street says you have the hots for somebody. <laughs> As if. Come on, word on the street doesn't lie. You kidding? You know there's nobody at this school who's my type. Yeah, you like him with uh, string words and death breath, right? Right, you keep forgetting that. <laughs> uh, Art, tell me, uh, who's saying stuff? There is someone, isn't there? Otherwise you wouldn't ask. Who is it? Who? Nobody. I'm just curious who said stuff. Deaky's in love. Deaky's in love. Machine gun fire? Definitely some sort of automatic weapon. Great. That's all I need. To get gunned down by a crazed killer. I'm in the prime of my life. Shh. It's getting closer. Lost his marbles and numb? Hammerhead for real. Gunning down teachers? Come on. Boy, this guy sure has a unique gift for salesmanship. Sounded like an automatic weapon. You know, I would have preferred if you were gunning down teachers. True. Could use a couple days off. Yeah, they'd probably have to close the school, eh? <laughs> At least for the afternoon. Too young for this stuff. Way too young. I mean, my parents were 25 when they got married. By then, your life's half over. Besides, who ever heard of a private detective with a girlfriend? Did Philip Marlowe have a girlfriend? No. Sam Spade? No. Of course, Sam never met Jenny Buoma. Cutest girl in all of grade 7. And the way she smells drives me crazy. Great Peru, I think. What a knockout. Here goes nothing. I'm in there. She likes me.
Deacon? Deacon? Deacon! <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to share that with the class, Deacon. What? Share what? That note. Perhaps you'd like to share it with the whole class. Nope. Don't play games, young man. You and Jenny were passing notes. <laughs> Who thinks this is funny? Hand it over. <laughs> you and Jenny after school. I think it's time for a little chat. A chat? About your behavior in my class. Uh, yeah. I've been meaning to tell you how much I really enjoy this class and how rewarding an experience it's been for me. I'm talking about the note. These sorts of shenanigans will not be tolerated. Two weeks' detention for the both of you might smarten you up a bit. Miss Winsome, I got a message here for you. Not now, Zane. I'm busy. Uh, you got left in the principal's office. I think it's important. Thank you. I just finished telling her what a terrific teacher she was when Zane walked in with the envelope. She took the stuff out and fell down. That's it. Think she's dead? She'll be okay in a while. Did she say anything before she fell and mention anybody's name? No. Nope. Where's the envelope? Jenny's got it. Here. That's it? Yep. Thanks. What about the note? Keep it. What? Shh. What are you doing? We're going to solve this one ourselves, Mr. Hotshot Detective. How can we trust that guy? Seriously, he didn't even have a hat? Uh-uh. Withholding evidence? You can get in trouble for that. No way. Don't be such a geek. She was going to give us two weeks, but if we solve this for her, she'd have to let us off. Two weeks in the detention hall beats ten years in the cooler. No way. Not in a million years. Uh-uh. Forget it. I was looking for someone to go to the dance with on Friday. All right. Well, you know what that could lead to. Who's Penelope? I think it's her poodle. I didn't know her first name was Marjorie. Hey, maybe that's a clue. Hmm. Who's failing history? Bunch of people. McGiddy is, but he's failing everything. Arthur isn't doing very well. Hammerhead Friel's mom made him quit the baseball team until he gets a better grade. Even Zane's doing lousy. That all of them? No way. Like I said, half the class is failing. Why, you gonna interrogate them all? Might have to. Well, come on. Arthur and Zane are there staring at us. Arthur, where were you on the night of the 21st? When? 21st, you deaf? 
How should I know? You'd know, because you couldn't hear as well. I mean, how should I know what I was doing on the night of the 21st? Take a guess. Watching TV, I guess, but what difference does it make? She got the envelope this morning. Just checking. You aware that Miss Winsome has a pet poodle named Penelope? Oh, yeah, I mean, remember when she brought to class and it peed on Jimmy McGinney's leg? <sighs> Zane, what's Miss Winsome's first name? Oh, I don't know. Larry, Curly, <coughs> Mo. You know, if you're so smart, what is Miss Winsome's first name? It's Marjorie, what'd you think? It is, is it? I see. What else do you know about Miss Winsome that we don't? Yeah, and what were you doing this morning between 9 and 11? Quit it. I'm supposed to be interrogating you. Yeah, well, who says this isn't part of your elaborate cover-up scheme? Or you pretend to be on the side of justice while secretly perpetrating evil deeds? Evil deeds? I'm not the one going around with copies of last year's science finals and selling them for a buck each. That's not an evil deed. That's a service. Yeah, well... <sighs> Give it a rest, you guys. You hear what this fat had accused me of? Yeah, you can stop accusing each other. I know who sent the note. You do? Yeah, I gotta go talk to the cop. Excuse me. Nothing bugs me more than people arguing with each other and missing the obvious. I know who the pooch napper is, even if nobody else has a clue. So this is the kid's number, eh? Yeah. We call him Hammerhead because he got hit by a sledgehammer when he was little. Really, he wouldn't hurt a fly. Probably just wants to stay on the baseball team. Yeah, his mom must have made him type up the thing to sell his glove. Yep, same typewriter. Those S. Just a little bit higher than the rest of the letters. Good work, kid. Maybe you'll wind up to be a detective, too, someday, like me. Oh, I should be so lucky. What's happening now? You wouldn't believe it. Come on, let me look. No way. This is too good. Let me look. Oh, boy. Things you do when you're in love. Come on, what are they doing? Let me see. Forget it. Get your own telescope. Give it. Now. Hey, what are you... Quit it. Don't you know this is a finely calibrated scientific instrument? I'll calibrate your face. You're a bonehead. No, you're a bonehead. Man, I'm getting dizzy. You're born dizzy. I think I'm gonna throw up. When do I get my corsage? What? When do I get my corsage? What's that, a sports car? No, stupid. It's a little bunch of flowers I wear on my dress. What do you want those for? I mean, don't they just die? What's the point? You take a bunch of flowers, cut them off from the source of food, murder them, just wearing your dress? Seems awful cruel to me. If you go take me to the dance on Friday, you have to get me a corsage. Well, uh, do they cost a lot of money? Because this last job was basically a freebie. So you going to the dance? Yeah, might as well. Who are you going with? Nobody. Probably just Zane. Getting him a corsage? Nah, he doesn't need to look pretty. You're right. He already looks pretty. Pretty, pretty ugly. ugly. Hey, how you doing, Geraldo? Hello, Arthur. Can I help you? Uh, yeah. I need a corsage. Not for me. The cheapest one you got. Thanks. Who is that guy? Geraldo something. Says he's from Mexico. Got transferred into grade eight at our school. I'd like to order a dozen roses, please, to be delivered. Name and address? Jennifer Luoma, 16 Cristo Park Way. Did you hear what he said? Wasn't listening. He's having flowers sent to Jenny's house. Roses, a dozen of them. So tear him limb from limb. Should I? Better make sure it's the right Jenny first. Hey, excuse me. Yeah, you. What'd you just say? Just now? Yeah. I said it looks like it's going to be a nice day if it doesn't rain. No, no, before that. Who are you sending flowers to? Jennifer Luoma, 16 Crystal Park Way. Describe her. Eyes that sparkle like diamonds. Golden hair like silk to the touch. Can't be her. And her scent, the sweetness, the scent of great bubble gum. It's her. Hey, you're lucky I find violence politically reprehensible, pal. Or you'd be on the floor right now. Is this not a free country? Am I not free to walk as I please, talk as I please, 
send flowers to whomever I please? Is this how you welcome me to your country? By trying to rob me of my rights as a human being? Got a point. I guess. That'll be two dollars. Two dollars? Whoa. Plus tax. Not much for two bucks. Nice corsage. Pal. Some say it is dangerous, but for me, it was a way of life. It was like I heard the cliffs, some 80, 100 feet high, calling me, Geraldo, come, come dive off me into the cool, clear ocean waters. Wow, you mean you really dove off the cliffs? Oh yes, it was then when I felt at one with nature. All time seemed to stand still. I didn't even think about the danger until after. And I would walk away, thankful to still be alive. Wow, that's so romantic. Look at them. This is pathetic. Women. I think he's a fake. What? Araldo over there. I think he's a phony. I don't think he's from Mexico at all. I think he made it all up so we could get all the girls when he came to our school. Really? Really. And you can prove it? I can prove anything. Come on. And once when I was diving for pearls in the Gulf, I was paid a little visit by a great white shark looking for food. Slowly he circled around me, looking at me with his cold gray eyes, waiting for the right moment to strike. Wow. What happened? See this scar? He managed to get his teeth into me before I could wrestle him away. Pretty lucky, Raldo. Not many people survive great white shark attacks. You are so right, senor. Luckily, I always die with my knife beside me. I have heard of stories of people who, well, there is a word for it in my language. It is not a pretty sight what a great white can do to people not as brave as I. You speak pretty good English. Thank you. It took me a lot of work. Mexican, of course, is my native tongue. Do you speak any other languages? Si, senorita. I speak fluent Mexican, English, and a little French. Very little. <laughs> All the romantic languages. See the nice rose Geraldo got me? I got 12 of them. Hey, uh, nice corsage you got there, Jen. This? <laughs> Looks like it cost two bucks. Plus tax. Won't you guys get lost? What happened with the shark? There was no shark. 
What? You're just jealous just because you've never been to Mexico. Bet this guy hasn't either, have you, Jerry? Sure. He's got a nice outfit and a stupid accent, but Geraldo here is about as Mexican as chow mein. Women, eh? Who can figure them? Not me. That's for darn sure. So Mexicans don't speak Mexican, eh? Speak Spanish. Yep. Wouldn't have said anything. Except for, you know, Jen. Yeah. The way I see it, probably did each other a favor. Women. Who needs them? One second they love you. As soon as they find out you're phony, bam. Gone like the wind. Women. Who can figure them? I don't know. I just don't know. You know, I remember this time, this lady, she had so much makeup, she was like so ugly. She asked me to kiss her, I said like, no way. Guys. Turned out Jerry wasn't such a bad guy after all. Guess he was a real homer at the last school he went to and thought he'd try the Mexican thing to see what happened. Would have let him get away with it too, if, like I said, he wouldn't have muscled in on Jen. <sighs> Jenny. Nice girl, I guess. Not my type though. <laughs> that great Peru really reeks. I don't know if I'm ready for this stuff. Too young to get tied down. I value my freedom. Nah, I'll never be ready. I guess Philip and Sam were right. Who ever heard of a private eye with a girlfriend? The True Story of Scandal, starring Joanne Watt.